All right, folks, we're going to do a quick breakdown of perpetual contract funding rate, one of our more popular metrics at Santiment. Uh, the reason we like it is because it's a very good reflection of how traders are perceiving the upcoming market movements. Uh, just like MVRV or social volume or um, you know, weighted social sentiment, which measures, measures positive or negative ratios um, of the actual commentary, funding rate is, is basically them putting their money where their mouth is. And uh, when leverage longs are outweighing leverage shorts, you'll see a very high uh, bar that will exceed the normal amount. And that would be a sign that people are getting a bit greedy. When you see people shorting in excess of, long, uh, of longing, then you'll see a very negative bar uh, that indicates that there's a great deal of fear and uh, worry, AKA FUD, for those of you who know that term, fear, uncertainty, doubt. So the perpetual contract funding rate, in essence, as described by our academy says, the funding rate is a fee paid by one side of the per per perpetual contract to the other, when the funding rate is positive, longs pay shorts. When the funding rate is negative, shorts pay longs. So essentially people who are on that uh, common side of things, if there's an extra long uh, funding rate, they are actually paying a premium to go long. Um, and on the other end, if it's you know predominantly short at that time, people are paying a premium if they want to go short along with the crowd. Uh, I'll take you over to our... Bitcoin funding rate page, where we have four different ones available. We have the brand new DYDX exchange funding rates, the BitMEX funding rate, the Binance funding rate, and the FTX funding rate. Now, of course, putting them all together here, it looks like a bit of a jumbled mess, but you can see the zero line here that shows when things are extremely high, such as this huge DYDX exchange uh, long spike that actually correlated with a top that occurred and everyone was longing here expecting that this was the big bounce where it would go right back up to the all-time high that occurred back on November 8th. Um, it didn't of course and all of these leveraged longs essentially got liquidated. Not all of them, of course many you know bowed out before they would get liquidated but regardless um, it, the the common presumption here um, really got uh, triumphed by the opposite outcome. And that is very often what will happen in cryptocurrency. Um, you can see now um, with DYDX and the other exchanges, most of them are underwater. I'll look at them one at a time. If you look over on the on the right, they were underwater. I, I beg your pardon on, on saying that it still is because uh, at least on DYDX, it is back above zero, indicating that people are longing a bit more than shorting right now. I'll get rid of that one. On the BitMEX side of things, people are still shorting. And you can see that this is pretty much the, uh, the most short people have been on BitMEX for Bitcoin since uh, early December. So give or take about a month or so, a little over, called five weeks. Um, so that's pretty significant. I'll remove that. Now we'll look at Binance. You can see here that this is the most that people have shorted on Binance for Bitcoin since September 24th. So we're looking at almost four months since we were last this short. That's a very good sign, especially with Binance having the most volume of any exchange out there in the world. And last but not least, looking at FTX, uh, let me make sure to get area on. So the way to get the zero line up is, is to go from line to filled area. And by doing this, we can see where the zero line is and how just two days ago we began to go under it and look at how the price has risen ever since it went under. So FTX is a pretty good baseline as well. You can even see here back on December 3rd, look how much people were shorting on FTX in particular and how that signaled pretty much the bottom until people changed their mind. This may not, of course, be the same people doing it, but um, the masses at least put the ratio back into the positive range and guess where the top was and then it came right back down so you'll see quite a few patterns like this where when it's in the negative a lot of bottoms occur when it's in the uh, positive range that's when a lot of tops occur right now we're still in a negative range for three out of those four exchanges so i find that quite interesting um, a simpler way to do it if you'd like and i'll leave this link in the description would be to look at the average funding rate. All this is doing is taking all four 
of those funding rates together, dividing by four, um, subtracting by just slightly to put it, so by default, the flat line is at 0 0.0001. So I remove that and put it right at zero just for simplicity, but that won't really change much. Either way, you can essentially look at this as the average of all four funding rates and look at how the average is pretty much the lowest it's been since that big crash that happened on December 4th. Um, something to keep in mind is, you know, prices won't always correlate exactly with the funding rate. There are many other things to look for um, in terms of on-chain metrics, social metrics, you know, the amount of daily active addresses, uh, circulation. But in general, if you look at Bitcoin's funding rate, it's going to be kind of a guide for how the rest of the markets go. Yes, Bitcoin could kind of flatten out right now and altcoins can have a mind of their own, as we've often seen to be the case, especially since the drop occurred about two months ago. But all things considered, this indicates that it is a less risky time to buy because so many people are shorting and could very well get liquidated if there's a further rise. And if there are any short liquidations, uh, most of you who've been in the markets long enough know that that is a good indication that um, it can provide rocket fuel for a very quick surge. Kind of like we saw here, there were a ton of, of liquidations on the short end that occurred in late September. And we went and proceeded to go from a price of 41.2K for Bitcoin on the 29th, all the way up to a then all-time high of 66.8, which was a 62% uh, increase. Of course, this was an anomaly and it was able to go up despite the fact that people were already starting to long here. But look at the biggest spike. This occurred pretty much right after uh, that all-time high was hit and then many long liquidations happen. So you guys get the idea. The last thing I wanna show here would be the funding rate model. Um, now I have a, a few more assets than the one that we offer uh, for our Sandbase Pro members, which I think is more like 30-ish assets. Um, but you can absolutely add many assets like the one that I have on my model. And this shows quite a few different things. Um, I kind of designed it to keep it uh, fairly straightforward uh, and intuitive to give you a lot of information without crowding your screen. So for starters, any solid green bar here means that the price is being uh, the funding rate is short right now. Any red bars here means the funding rate is, is very long or at least excessively long. And then the yellow, as you might guess, these are essentially the neutral areas which occur anywhere between zero and 0.01. Uh, most of the, the assets fall between the green and the yellow range right now. Um, and there are something like, just doing a quick ballpark, around 20-ish of these uh, 80 to 90, I think maybe a little less, like 70 to 80 assets that I'm showing right now. Um, someone can count and fact check me. I don't remember how many I left up here, but 20 of those 80-ish, we'll call it, are actually in short territory right now. And that's a very good thing. That means there are a lot of people betting against the markets and are primed to be liquidated if markets continue to climb, especially for any of these assets. You know, Binance coin way down at negative 0, uh, 0. 0.082 right now. Um, you'll also notice these faint lines. This is the lowest the funding rate has been in uh, the time that this... Uh, this data is being pulled from, which in this case is one month. So over the past month, this is the lowest funding rate for Digibyte, for example. Hedera Hashgraph had an extremely low funding rate at one point. Um, so you can just measure how each one, each of these assets is currently sitting versus its very highest funding rate and very lowest funding rate. Uh, so Oftentimes, you'll only see one that had an extreme on one side, but you can see like Digibyte, for example, had a very high funding rate and also a very low funding rate um, over the past month. The other thing you can look at are the 8, 16, and 24-hour uh, marks. So you can see how the current funding rate compared to the last three uh, funding rates that include Binance. The reason I'm not showing every hour is because Bi Binance only shows intervals in eight. So to keep all of the funding rates averaged together, it's better to uh, 
kind of go with the lowest common denominator, which is the, the Binance eight hour funding rate. Um, regardless, I think it's a pretty good interval anyways, even if we, we were doing hourly, because it kind of gives you a glimpse of the three previous times uh, over the last day, 24 hours or so. And so the, you know, for example, we can see Binance coin way down here. It's the most short out of the top 150 market cap assets that we have funding rate data on. And eight hours ago, it was a little more modest, still very low at negative 0.061. 16 hours ago, it was actually um, looking a little closer to neutral. And then 24 hours ago, it was actually still quite low, but not quite as low as it is now. So you can see which ones are actually gaining momentum um, and are lower than they, they have been over the last few intervals where we've gotten funding rate data from those exchanges. Um, and it's, it's definitely a good idea to look at those that have uh, the momentum going toward the extreme. So, you know, the 8, 16 and 24 hours are all above where it is now, for example. So, um, you know, obviously not investment advice. Like I said earlier in this, in this uh, quick video, funding rate is only one metric and a lot is going to be based on how Bitcoin looks uh, because Bitcoin will drag the markets where it pleases. Um, right now, you know, at the time of this recording, altcoins have been performing uh, quite a bit better than Bitcoin the last couple of days uh, um, after Bitcoin's kind of flattened out in the low 40Ks. But things can change on a dime and let funding rates be your friend here. I'll leave links to everything I showed here in the video. And I look forward to any follow up questions you guys have. Come check out our Discord and discuss with me and our other staff members more. And I hope you all have a good rest of the week here. Talk to you all soon.